So I've chosen the handbag, and I've chosen the handbag because I think it distills so much about politics in relation to gender. So one of the issues, obviously, about Margaret Thatcher was that we had never had a woman politician who'd had that amount of power before. And what do people do with that knowledge? And the fact is, I think that people, but it has to be said, especially men, found that extremely difficult. And the handbag sums up the ways in which men responded to Thatcher's power. So I think it's rather double-edged. Of course, the handbag became a symbol. And if you look in the Oxford English Dictionary, you'll see that the verb to handbag derives from Thatcher's time. So sure, it's a symbol of her political power, but it only works because she's a woman. So the satire inevitably, I think, draws on these very, very powerful gender images. Now, there is actually another dimension to this, I think, which is Thatcher's own relationship to her handbag. And I think she was quite self-conscious about the way she used her handbag. So she apparently said that she had her speeches written on a size of paper so they would fit into her handbag. So she could just whip things out of her handbag without having to fuss with files and so on. She also said that she knew that nothing that was in her handbag could leak, I mean, politically speaking. <laughs> and I think the kind of visual language that he uses to explore her is absolutely rooted in the fact that she is a woman who is aware of her femininity and who dresses in a particular kind of way and who attires herself the way she chose jewelry, for example, which is very reminiscent of the way members of the royal family use jewellery. So I think he's picked up a lot of those things, probably at different levels of awareness. I'm sure he's totally self-aware, but I think some idioms of femininity creep into our visual world, whether we're aware of it or not.